part of what I wanted to say I couldn't deliver I didn't know any way Barclay, Colonel Barclay's wife. We need to come up with some exciting activities while our service people are away. What about singing? Singing? Well, let's just get the strippers in. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Corinna from the Fan Carpet, and we are here at Leicester Square to celebrate the premiere of Military Wives. Now, you might remember this from the very, very famous documentary a few years ago, which was fronted by the choir master that is Gareth Malone. And now, all these years later, they are making this very special film to bring it to new communities. So we are here, and we are interviewing the whole cast and the director and so much more and I'm looking forward to seeing what it's all about. Military Wives is the story of a female choir that, um, that was used to rally the, the, the morale of uh, women left behind when, not women, partners left behind when, uh, when the soldiers went to war. Um, I think it's important to be told now because the results of it, we all know what happened with the military choir. In fact, oh look, they're all up there, it's so sweet. I'm just watching them all up there. But um, it's important because I think it just makes you hopefully slightly less judgmental of each other, slightly kinder. You don't know what people's stories are, what they're, you know, what battles they're fighting, what's happening in their lives, and I think that's an important message for now. I play uh, Lisa, who's someone who kind of fell into it by accident. It wasn't really her choice at all. She just fell in love with a squaddy, uh, got knocked up, and suddenly finds herself in that military life, but he rises to the ranks, and so so does she, really. I, I, I'm the very bossy um, colonel's wife, who's, um, who's being bossy just to sort of being able to keep her own feelings under control. So you play Crook, so tell us a bit about the character you play. Well, he's a soldier, and that's about as far as I know. <laughs> I mean, he, he's the, um, the welfare officer, so he stays behind and is meant to look after the base, but actually ends up being with 36 strong women every day on set, which I absolutely love. Can kind of think why. <laughs> what, 36 strong women and me? And I would say to my, I've got to go to work, it's a nightmare. But it was an amazing experience, and I loved every minute. And, uh, you know, it's important if you get the chance to take those chances and to spend five weeks with 36 strong women is a, is a, is a life-changing thing, definitely. So, with the music, obviously a lot must have gone into picking the right music. I hear that Robbie Williams also contributed. Yeah, so Guy Chambers and Robbie Williams, who write all the songs together, um, wrote the song which is featured towards the end of the film. Um, in the fiction of our film, the wives write it themselves. Um, but yeah, Guy and Robbie came back with this demo, sent it over to me, and I was just like, wow, that song's so good. And then we based it all on the letters, which is similar to Gareth Malone's documentary. We based all the lyrics on letters that women write to and from their husbands overseas. Um, and then once the lyrics came through, we kind of reverse engineered that and put that in the scene when they all talk about their letters. And um, So it has a certain inner truth to it, I think, and works really well. So what do you think is so important about this film for it to be made now? Oh, I mean, you know, it's, it's a great story of friendship and camaraderie and women coming together and it's, you know, it's, it's really interesting, to, it's really from the perspective of people waiting, you know, um, and it's fun, it's like, you know, there's, there's lots of um, happiness in it and, so, you know, it runs the whole gamut of emotions, but really it's, good, it's a good feel-good film with lots of women. <laughs> I was like, really? I think we thought it was a joke. We did think yeah. it was a joke initially. We had to really have a chat amongst us. We thought it was just a random little film, you know, just some little producers. And we, then we heard and we thought, no, they do, really don't need to be doing this, but here we are tonight. Well, as soon as we knew it was going to be done in one continuous shot, we were like, <laughs> we're in. Uh, no, it was 
was really important because uh, it's a story that isn't told and it was a story that I knew nothing about but as soon as we were doing it and as soon as we started meeting the women and learning a bit more about it it felt like a really important story to tell. How did you go about staying true to the real military wife? Well they were involved I mean a, a, along the way you know the producers were dealing with the military wives organization constantly and from the beginning so you know we it was really important for us to keep really faithful um, to their story um, and to you know from the music perspective you know it was I was really thinking about the kind of music that they'd be into and the world that you know their world really so but we, we work very closely with them so um, in the process of making the film did you come into contact with the real military wives and their husbands to kind of get a feel for what th their story was not really. I mean, we, we worked on the military bases and we had military um, people who advised us which hand to salute with. But um, I'm definitely not Robert De Niro. It's not too method. I just put the suit on, make sure I salute with the right hand and just say the line. So it, I can't pretend that I was massively, res I did a massive amount of research, no. So when you were approached for this originally, way back in time, how did you feel? And did you could you imagine it would eventually turn to a movie? No, but I, I get uh, I got especially at that time, it was about two thousand and eight nine. I got a lot of letters uh, from people saying, "Please come and sing with us." Please come. With us. People had seen the choir, and one woman was Nikki Clark, who had seen the choir and thought that would be great. Come and sing on our military base. And sadly, the the timings of it didn't work out with the MOD, and I couldn't go to that base. But I ended up at Chivner, and, and it, it was so small. It was so like we did it in a in a little church hall. It was very kind of ramshackle, and there were babies crawling around on the floor. And to get to this is amazing. But I mean, it's a measure of just how much they touched the hearts of the nation. I think this is a very very exciting evening for you. I mean, imagine that when you first got together, you would never have thought it was going to turn to this blockbuster movie. No. Well, we started off in a little hall, and uh, there was just about five or six of us and sort of thought oh we'll just do this to keep you know everybody going and then it's just turned into what it is today and it is it's a support network it's about looking after ladies you know it's a very lonely life service life and if you're in a big garrison you can be sitting in a room on your own with your kids thinking oh my goodness what's going on and it's something that we can do to make people feel good I mean singing's very good for your health wouldn't we yeah. say, ladies? Very Absolutely. therapeutic. Yeah. Very <laughs> therapeutic indeed. Yeah. I mean, the, the girls come to choir once a week for their choir fix, yeah. and if they can't get to choir for their choir fix, they're not too happy about it at all. So, you know, it's not, it's not, um, it's not all about the singing. The main objective is the support. To the upload, support upload network. All, yeah. um, but everybody, everybody understands the next person, because we all lead a similar life. We all have a similar role in our lives. Most of us are away from our families, a long way away from our families and um, it just brings us together. It just bring, it's, they become our second family, you know, choir is our second family. I think the thing about choirs and it's the proof is in how many choirs are happening as we speak, um, is that it really does give you this feeling of belonging to something and having a common goal and it's a very precise goal, it's a song or a piece of music and I think that gives people enormous amount it's a pleasure to be able to do something together and um, we're all becoming more and more individualized you know with our phones and our so we're more and more separate and to do something all together as a group is amazingly satisfying. What would you say is the importance of, of music in this film? Do you know what it's just it's, um, the script's quite linear and it had to be handled by someone quite masterful like Peter Catania, um, so it didn't become cheesy and it didn't become, um, you know, Abba the movie, you know, it's important that it didn't become that and that the singing is part of the story and I think he's done that really, really well, but it definitely took someone smart and clever and talented to do that. I was just wondering, did you have to go for any choir training yourselves? Was it, were there your own Gareth Malone on hand to train you all? We, we, we had a lovely we had our lady, Gareth Jenny. Malone, Jenny. Jenny was amazing. She did not take any crap either. No, and, and there's no point trying to, sometimes it, it's really intimidating, you know, when you're asked to sing in front of a whole load of people you've never met before. 
and they're all sort of waiting for you to waiting to hear what you can do and it gets really scary and sometimes you just say oh I can't do this and you're about three years old and you say I can't do this no I'm rubbish I can't do it and she wouldn't let us do that yeah that's true and she kept going she, she found all these physical ways of moving of bending your knees do you remember what she made you tricks plenty of tricks yes the bending of the knees not straining yeah yeah I know I do well yeah Kristen and Sharon are the heart of the story and their friendship and the trials and tribulations between the two of them is really the emotional spine of the film. So uh, they were a joy to work with, you know, they're always questioning the script, trying to make it true and real, um, but they had a real spark together. They're kind of chalk and cheese, but it really works on screen, I think. I'm, I'm represented by 42 and they made the film. So they were like, you're doing it. And I'm like, well, hold on, let me read the script. They're like, no, 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 you're doing it. So I, I just did what I was told. And Ben Pugh and um, his mob who produced it are the same producers that I did Shifty with 100 years ago. So it's, it was sort of destined that I had to do it. But having said that, I'm really proud of it. And when I, I was a bit grumpy about doing it, but when I actually saw it, I was over the moon. And it's one of the things I'm proudest of because it's a beautiful film with a great message. It's one of the best things I've ever done. It was the most amazing reaction. It, you know, I, I performed in front of the Queen. We were at, you know, what, what, didn't we go to, I went to Abbey Road. You know, I, I worked with Gary Barlow. All these incredible things have happened in my life as a result of this. And so I'm, I'm delighted. And it's lovely to see the women get this moment. You're just boasting now. It was great. It was cool. It was cool. I, I've got to say it was really cool. So since the actual documentary all those years ago, have you seen a surge of women signing up to choir? There's 75 choirs now, more. There's choirs in Australia, yes. America, and they all use the military wives, you know, the logos, and they've all got their own own networks. And then we, we see that and we think, this is because of what happened to us. We have to pinch ourselves sometimes. And it, it just makes us really proud that there are women out there that can do what we're doing and that that's it basically you were the music consultant but you weren't actually directing the choir the what well, the the acting choir so to speak but how, well, how, how was your involvement in this film yeah. um so i i advised on the story um so i read various i had lunch with one of the uh, the writers and i advised on the script and said that doesn't feel realistic or that doesn't feel musical uh, and the musical journey that the women went on i sort of advised them how to kind of show that so there's a few ideas in there that, are, that I'm going to say are actually mine. So. I got a little credit right at the end. It says story advisor Gareth Malone. Have you seen the film yet yourself? Is it true to what it felt like when you were? I mean, it's not. It's not the story of the documentary. It's the story of the wives, which is a different thing. There's no kind of comedy Gareth Malone character. It's about it's about the women, about their relationship with their husbands, about what they go through, which is much more interesting and more important story. Have you seen someone else? Yeah, sorry, I was saying hello. <laughs> that and that's tough. How much involvement did you guys have in the sort of consultation of the film? Didn't have any. Plymouth didn't have any involvement whatsoever um, because Plymouth is still part of the foundation. So when the when the choirs formed and they started to build rapidly, I think by the time we got to about ten choirs, wasn't it? We um, formed our own charity, Military Wives Choir Foundation. Formed a network of choirs of which Nikki said there's over 75. So Plymouth. Are, the, are, are quite unique in the network because they're uh, the only original surviving choir in the network and uh, we're Chivana separate. and Catherine are separate now. Yeah. So, um, so for us, you know, it's it's very different. So, you know, the, the producers did go to um, Chivana and uh, Catrick and had quite a lot of involvement from these ladies um, uh, but we didn't have any because of the situation. The story off is the TV, though, it was that as well. You know, we're all involved in it, and like I say, we we did sit with the writers and we chatted for a while, and we might have given too much away. We don't know, but um, I'm hoping what we did 
give is being portrayed tonight and I'm really I've got my tissues ready uh, you just mentioned the music how did you go about selecting what you consider to be the right songs what what had to hit the criteria so to speak well I, I mean I worked with a director on it we spent quite a lot of time and it's so funny when you when you see it and you kind of think oh everyone knows these songs that was a big part of it you know we wanted everyone to know them to relate to them that songs that you know we all love and classics and you know also the other side of it was to look at songs that could be arranged well for a choir. So something like Only You, you know, when you see it, there's lots of different parts for the different parts of the choir. So, you know, that came into it too. But it was really about the kind of stuff that we thought they'd be into. And of course, we could we could talk to them about that. And so there were songs that they had actually sung themselves or was it just completely new territory? I, mean, I, I don't know whether they've sung them in their repertoire, but um, I know there's lots of choirs that have come uh, sung some of these songs. But we didn't want to be too influenced by that you know we wanted to you know we went through hundreds of songs we tried lots and lots of different things so um, you know and then we came to to where we came to just by you know trying things out and doing different arrangements we had lots of different tracks on our list and we tried to do arrangements and some work better than others I think that music is magic um, uh, it's one of those things that you genuinely can't explain it touches the soul it, it, it raises people up um, in the most dire of circumstances and they were in a pretty grim yeah. situation with, mm -hmm. with everyone out in Afghanistan and casualties and people you know bodies coming back through Bryce Norton it was a very dark time and to start, find the confidence to stand up in the Albert Hall and sing it was amazing and I think it did something very important not just for them as individuals I think yeah. I'm safe in saying but co collectively I think a lot of military wives can hold their heads high, yeah. higher now I think really it's the music and the cast is what makes the film really work um, I think music just has a way that goes right into your soul and into your emotions um, and I think that's I didn't quite expect that in a theatre when I saw the film for the first time and people were watching it and listening to that music you could sense it really hit them emotionally and here they go now I think this is a great way to bring these amazing women and the, and the British military back to, to the forefront of people's minds which you know, I think people had maybe just thought oh well, they're okay now we bought the single um, and and, and the, the work goes on, you know, every single week as a result of what these women did, there are about 3,000 military wives getting together singing in bases all over the world and that wouldn't have happened had they not sort of put, their, the, put themselves on the line and I think, that's, I think that's a great thing to celebrate. I mean the inspiration for the film is the documentary, the Gareth Malone documentary, Military Wives, um, and then we from there started doing a lot more research and it's all true stories really based on the true lives of women on military bases so it's just lots of research and then shaping it into a pretty classic kind of rags to riches type movie. And what do you hope people will take away from this film by the end of this evening? Just be nicer to each other you know I think it's an important message for now and don't judge people you don't know what their story is and I think that's kind of the simple message of the film. Yeah. I ha I've seen it. I'm the only one from the three of us that have yeah. seen it. So. And um, although, you know, I, I went with all of my choir ladies um, in Plymouth, so that was a really special moment yeah. for, to, as a choir. Um, and, and to see it again tonight, I know there'll be so much that I miss because I cried through a lot of it. I howled through a lot of it. So, you know, it's got all, all those moments that you need for a good yeah. film. And it's a fabulous yeah. film. It's yeah. absolutely yeah. Don't say any more. <laughs> I just hope people, you know, realise the, the hardships, uh, you know, military families go through, the positives military families go through. You know, and I know everyone's like talking about military wives, military wives, but for me it's an important message for like the service men and women as well, that people, you know, still well, remember them because, here, you know, they're still here protecting us and if it wasn't for them, you know, it's, they do a really important job. I'm hoping to take away that the story will introduce our world to more military wives yes. and make them join choirs just for that support. 
pubs because yeah. there's so many wives out there yeah. that need it. And there's an end product, the singing. Yeah. It's not like just some coffee morning or something. Yes. Oh, we get yeah. to do things like this. Come yeah. on. I want them to take away a feeling of thinking people are really great. That there are wonderful people and we must all be nice to each other. <laughs> yeah. People can be great. People can be kind. I do a show called Pennyworth, which I'm doing the second season of. I've got Save Me, which is the new the Sky thing, which is the second season. We've just done that. And another thing called uh, Two Weeks to Live on Sky as well. So Sky being kind to me at the moment. Glad you watch it. Um, it gets darker quickly, very quick, very dark. But I did even bring, just for you, the gold Harwood nose. That's just for the Pennyworth fans. <laughs> So if you're looking for a lovely, cosy, community-driven film for your Sundays or for whatever time of day, then head to your local cinema on March the 6th to catch Military Wives. I've been Corinna from The Fan Carpet, and remember, if you want more of your cinema-fueled news, then head to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It happens when you care. This choir isn't about singing for ourselves. It's about them being heard. Behold our choir, dignified, noble, full yeah. class. <laughs>